Hey, hello everyone, no respawns here. So I'm playing RimWorld. Um, before, I, before I get into actually doing kind of quite a few videos on this, I thought I'd just give a brief overview of exactly what RimWorld is, as well as maybe just kind of a couple of quick getting started tips, shall we say, um, to kind of get you on the right foot. Um, I've only been playing this game since the last weekend. However, um, actually even less than that, maybe like four days. Um, however, one, I've racked up 60 plus hours, and two, it's very, very similar to games that I've racked up tremendous amounts of hours. In terms of how you prioritize your tasks, I'm uh, basically what this kind of is, it's a colony heavy narratively, so it's a colony, colony management game with a he heavy narrative focus um, and a very severe survival element with a dynamic storytelling AI which throws challenges your way and but in a very clever, well-timed format that maybe gives you breathing room and doesn't seem forced. But in some instances can seem like very, very poor luck. Um, it's the best way to describe it. You know, when you have a solar flare, knock out all of your generators, and then suddenly have a cold snap, um, you know, half an afternoon, you know, the afternoon later, um, causing all of your heaters um, to be still non-functioning. Um, and therefore, um, though your settlers don't die, they do get very, very, well, there some of them do might die. Um, but mine, so they just got very, very grumpy. It's that kind of game. And I absolutely love it. I can't stop. This is my crack. This is my jet. Um, if we go into the Fallout reference, um, and the fact is that I just, I just, I just can't stop. Someone, please send help. Um, I haven't showered in days. Um, that's a lie. I showered for the first time this morning. That's also a lie. I'm not that gross. Don't worry. Anyway, so I thought um, I'd just give you a quick brief overview, just kind of how you get started, and then we'll just jump straight in. So, um, I'll quickly show you. So the way it works is you get a scenario. Um, this is just basically what you start with. It's pretty self-explanatory. This one, you get three set, um, three, three crash-landed survivors. So the basic classic room world experience this is the one I go for. Um, it just gives you three people, a quite a nice starting selection, as well as some few stuff um, scattered around the map, um, as well as a pet as well. Um, this one's a bit interesting. I haven't tried it with Rich Explorer, so it's one person with a lot more stuff. Um, and then some tribes people, which I actually quite like the idea of. Um, you start off with quite a few people, however, that's potential for using quite a lot of... It would be nice RP, um, in the sense of, you know, it's kind of like your... Um, you, know, so that you could almost do a, a kind of like Fallout um, RP if you wanted to, you know, like you're kind of one of the, the Wanderer tribes from Fallout... Um, Wanderer? The chosen one, rather, from Fallout 2. Anyway, so let's just pick Crash Landed. So you get these two, um, three AI storytellers. Basically, rough is medium, um, but they just the way they send events your way is a bit different. So Cassandra's the one I go for, which basically just steadily gets um, steadily increasing curve of talent and tension, which I've quite enjoyed. Um, but then you can have um, Phoebe, who, by the looks of it, has kind of quite big disasters, but then kind of cooling off periods between which potentially could be quite fun, but it also means I imagine that the disaster she does throw your way will be testing what you've done. And then Randy here, who basically just... utterly random. I uh, That one probably sounds more fun than it actually is, if I'm utterly honest, because it'll just sing... Think, no, you'll just, you might have really boring periods, and then you might just have, like, utter just clusterfuckery. But, I mean, it's interesting. Anyway, so we'll pick Cassandra. Um, and the base you get to create your world from a seed. So this is any phrase. Um, you've probably gathered already what I'm going to do. Just put no respawns. You always get the same world. Um, that's not how you spell your channel name, David. Good work. Good work. Um, you just size like that. Um, so generate. And this is the no respawns planet. Um, Alf, Al, Aladfar Secundus. Um, so you just get several different biomes. Uh, it's probably kind of, it's pretty... You just can infer the difficulty. So basically, temperate. You can see the temperature. It's pretty. You know, I think it's lower than minus seven. I mean, you can go about. You know, here. You went here. Basically, you're never ever gonna suffer from extremes of heat or cold. Um, which is a bit dull. But I guess if you wanted to kind of like, you'd still. They'd probably. Um, the AI storyteller would still throw quite a lot of raids your way, especially if you chose a higher difficulty. Um, but generally, you wouldn't have to worry too much about extremes of weather, which I find quite boring. But then you obviously get deserts as well. Um, arid shrublands, vein forests, more desert. I think there's an extreme desert somewhere. There it is. So extreme desert. 
Boreal Forest, my personal favourite. Um, Tundra, and then Ice Sheets. Um, so it's pretty cool. It's very cool, actually, in fact. Um, I quite like it, because in the description in Steam, they do say it's very similar. It's inspired by Dune, Firefly, you know, it works a lot like Dwarf Fortress, that game you've all heard of but probably never played. Don't worry, neither have I. Um, but in terms of aesthetically, I mean, I quite like the... I, I'm generally in... I like to build, like, a, you'll see them in my compound. Um, but, you know, the idea being that you could go for something a bit more... Because there's a definite Firefly Western sci-fi vibe going on. With the fact is you can, you know, make dusters and cowboy hats. You could potentially just put yourself in the desert or a kind of an arid shrubland. Um, and just go for some kind of, like, dusty outpost. It's it's quite cool. But after you... Let's just pick someone randomly. And also shows you um, various things. I personally, and this is kind of my little advice in terms of tips... Um, I like to have three different kinds of stone, um, and I generally like to get an idea of what they are. I personally like having granite, limestone, and potentially slate, or just something, um, just something that I can, because I like to make things look nice as well as efficient, um, so I like to obviously decorate a little bit. Anyway, so let's just pick a random, because I'm actually not going to play this one, I'm just going to load the one I've already made up. So then after that, you get to make your three... Well, it depends on which um, scenario, but in this case, you're three colonists. Now, this is where it gets fun, but also you can probably spend a lot of time just doing this. I know I do. Um, it's fun, it's fine, because my, my logic is that you're going to invest quite a lot of time into this game, potentially these people. Um, and I quite like getting people that I can see myself playing as. Um, also, to be honest as well, once I got my nice start, I saved. <laughs> uh, the only thing wrong about that start, as you'll see, is that I have a really irritating Yorkshire Terrier instead of a decent dog, but oh well. Um, so basically, you get... They all have various quirks. So for example, Dahlia here is ugly. She's a pyromaniac. And she's a pessimist, so we're definitely not going to want her. But also has her background, so she was a cave world tender, starship janitor. These infer, as you can see, they give them bonuses to construction crafting, cave world tender. Um, and often, I think it should maybe... Oh no, because she's a pyromaniac, it means she's incapable of firefighting. But often, if I click a couple of times, so let's say... There we go. So, this person here is a Glitter World Empath, um, so he's quite kind of, well, empathetic, um, and just kind of mediate conflict. So, he doesn't actually, he can't fight in any way, shape, or form. He's also very hardworking, um, so he works a lot faster, and he's very intelligent, which means he learns quicker. However, he also um, overthinks things, um, so he gets his mental break. Yeah, he's quite eccentric. Threshold is plus 12. Um, and then you also get the various skills as well. So these are things pretty self-explanatory. Now this is where you get to the kind of my suggestions of how you start. I think often people tend to have roughly the same kind of things, but the things I look for is I want someone who's good at growing. Um, one thing I learned quite quickly, I get someone's good at growing. Oh, fine. I need at least eight, but um, basically you want someone eight plus because um, that way they can grow all of the crops, um, which is really important. Especially this one called Heal Root. Um, I think it's Heal Root or Heal Leaf. Whatever, the healing herb one, because um, I always find it, you tend to burn through your medical supplies quite quickly um, without realising it, especially come about winter, um, you know, getting into that scrapes with the dogs, fighting off infection, that kind of thing, so any way you can top them up is really almost essential as far as, to be honest, more so than the shooting, really, if I'm utterly honest, I, I tend to get things that have a more long term, because you can train shooting, um, and then beyond that, um, medicine um, is a quite huge one. Do everyone says medicine here? So five, but um, generally I try and get that kind of ten plus or eight plus at least. And um, you'll see here it says passion, burning, interested. That gives them a because the, as the more they do these, the better they get. Um, so having someone with a burning interest in say, I don't know if I get someone with a burning interest in say medicine. Okay, he's got an interest in medicine, so she would, even though she's quite not very good at it, um, her practicing medicine, she'd get better, and she'd get better faster as well. That's incredibly useful, um, just for the fact that you're not going to waste medical supplies, and it just, you know, makes sense. Um, and then beyond that, those are the two I'm essentially going to have. Ideally as well, if you can get someone who's interested in research, they don't have to be amazing at it. 
um because they will train fast at lower levels but if you can get someone with a burning passion or at least just interested in research um they'll train up very very fast because often once you've set up the basics of your colony you'll often pretty much have them researching 20 you know every waking moment um and then beyond that there are some kind of like important but i personally would say not as important to me kind of things crafting is a really useful now if you can get it um because that way that person will actually when you get to actually crafting kind of good stuff um they'll actually be significantly better at it um as well as construction is another good one because they make higher quality um kind of furniture um and then animals is one that i've been forcing myself to use um because I'm personally more inclined to shooting rather than melee. Um, so I've read some guides online where people like, you know, kind of have loads of bottlenecks and they just have loads of people charging with spears. I personally like turning things and shooting galleries. Um, so I'm trying to use um, animals so I can raise a nice pack of rabid wolves um, that I can lit slip the dogs of war and rip apart my enemies and also slow them down so that I can murder shit. Um, so everything's quite useful, but generally growing medicine and research are kind of the things you want then also beyond that you want to try and remove not all of the negative ones i'm like pyromaniac is one that you just want to get rid of off the back i wouldn't take anyone with that trait um psychically sensitive doesn't really bother me slow poke staggeringly ugly all that doesn't infect their social interaction so they're less likely to kind of be build strong bonds with other settlers if you don't mind for example I personally like to try and get people into couples as quickly as possible. One, because it makes them a lot happier, which happiness and people kind of losing their mind is quite a big problem. It's possibly harder to deal with than hunger. Hunger, you can just grab a gun and kill a boar. Um, whereas when people actually, and even like, you know, freezing and things like that, but when people lose their mind, it tends to make them hungry and freeze to death and they get more by wolves. So um, I generally, generally like to avoid ugly people chemical interest doesn't bother me so much um psychobath potentially quite a good one close these are quite cool ones as well so this one's um limited reason because you can give people bionics and you can operate on people and stuff like that i have um one of my settlers has asthma um and i purchased a lung of a trader she had two lungs with asthma um and i removed the lung and then replaced it with the uh um, with the new lung, and so she's now not, she's still got one lung with asthma, but one of her lungs is okay, um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's really cool, and there's so much, you're gonna find, like, with me, um, I like people who look cool, and I try and get them around my age as well, so kind of late 20s up to their late 30s, because often as well, people are, are generally more attractive, it just pairs people off a little bit easier, um, and anyway, I've got, already got a little area, um, a little starting location set up, so let's just pop over to that, shall we? So here is my um, uh, camp, um, colony rather, um, about, I'm on the 5th of summer now, so um, yeah, I've, I've been in um, 9 days um, in game, which isn't very long at all, but I've already got this nice setup together. Um, now, I've done quite a lot, um, and this is quite a heavily planned area. As you can see, I've actually used, it's this little technique down here the plan area here to actually oh, i've actually made a little mistake <gasps> my plan has a mess it's not a mess it's just that shouldn't be there and there you're gone cool um <clears throat> and what i prioritize basically is getting my room set up getting a basic power supply um from these two windmills here that are also because of the fact they've got this open space here so i've got farms in front of them and behind um, I've got loads of potatoes and loads of corn. Um, that will serve me very well, to say the least. Um, I've got no floors at all. Um, everyone's got metal beds. Two of my characters, um, Logan and Chalice, are a couple. So they now share a double bed, which is great. Um, Amelia, so these three were the ones I started with. Um, and then I had Sass join as a wanderer. And then Mendez, I got in a... An event happened where he sent a distress message out and he sounded pretty decent. Um, I'm trying to get his age um, close to someone. Basically, when people are around the same age um, and there's a chance they'll actually... They're more inclined. So you can see Chris Mendez and Amelia are getting close. 
they're gonna bump uglies hopefully soon uh, which means I get to put in the double bed until they take up less space and there's also the added bonus that as you can see from Logan here um, it makes them a lot happier um, same with here again it's all very grand oh yeah um, I had a dog that died um, it's a little Yorkshire Terrier he say I, I say he died um, I killed him because um, in my last save, I realized that unless it's a decent dog, like when I start training one of these timber wolves, um, the fuck's a freaking Yorkshire Terrier going to do, stupid skit rat. Um, sorry. Um, so as you can see right here, I've planned quite far ahead on this. And my priority was basically getting the rooms, farms, everything. And this outer wall was very important um, because occasionally you get a special event, actually not occasionally, quite annoyingly often, um, where you'll have... A rabid pack of wolves whatever attack and it's just so much easier to actually they can't go through doors um and they, they can't knock them down they'll just kind of run around and it's so much easier to do this so i've set it so the zone expanded so area one as you can see i've marked it so it's not even the door and then what i do is when anything like that happens i just go to restrict and restrict everyone to area one um normally they're unrestricted i used to restrict them to home but to be honest that's actually frustrating because I had to cut home down and it's much easier to have a second area. Um, that's a little tip, by the way. Um, wait out the wolves, seriously. Um, they, they eventually get tired and just get bored um, and stop. And you may also notice as well that, um, for example, I've got my electric stove right here. People are eating. I haven't even barely gotten round. I think I've... That's because one reason why I haven't set someone. But I only literally... Oh, yeah, no, I did. I just set her up for it now. But basically, one thing I always advise is, you see... When you're starting a game like this, um, and especially, um, especially this one, it's better to focus on pl forward planning um, and also getting a very nice setup. I've deliberately built mine around a steam geyser because I'm going to eventually have a geothermal generator. There'll be vents on all of these going through all the rooms, with the exception of the freezer there, um, and that will actually heat these rooms up which will be really really useful and save on power um but also just be a kind of quite reliable source of energy as well as power and i've also got my two power so i probably don't need any more generators once i get the geothermal i'm going to be prioritizing research very quickly um but one thing i haven't prioritized is food basically you may notice that literally all of the food i've gotten from here i did very recently just tell everyone to pick the berries around them um and that's my biggest piece of advice with this it's forward planning and getting something that I personally focus on something that looks nice, but is also efficient. Um, but also just don't panic. You've got... It's almost easy mode until the end of summer, basically. And then full hits. You don't have to worry about food. Everything's growing really fast. So literally, I just pick berries. Um, and I do eventually, like, stock up. As you can see, these are almost grown already. Um, but yeah. Now, let me... Before I just... Before I let you go... Um, because this is actually my second version of this, but I'll show you my original version of this idea, because I really like building around a steam geyser. Um, my settlement's called Deliverance, by the way, in case you're curious, um, because I'm a Warhammer 40k fuckboy, and as an ex-goth, I do love myself some Raven Guard. Um, Deliverance is the name of their fortress headquarters, in case you're wondering. Um, hello, ladies. But what I'll do is I'll show you, um, Deliverance, w the original Deliverance, um, which is actually an entire year on. So I've actually survived all of the seasons. And I think it's now in summer. Summer 2 on that one. Um, it's a different. It's, well, it's got some of the people. But then I've had different randoms join. Because uh, I actually have this one. These people saved. Because they're my favourite characters. I quite like them. Um, let me just show you what kind of a more advanced settlement. Like when all of this is done. Is finished. Anyway. Give me a mo. So here we are at the original Deliverance. Uh, so this is, we've survived 77 days. Um, we're kind of now pretty much coming to the end of um, summer already. Um, and I'm pretty good, pretty solid with this one. Um, I eventually restarted because the thing is, you probably know already, I like, you know, so I do like my aesthetically pleasing. This is an amazing little compound. Um, these are actually little bunkers which allow me to shoot out of. Um, I do need a little bit of melee defense. Which is a problem, I do sometimes get overwhelmed, um, but also I don't have much space. I've already used up, um, it's a little bit too cramped in here, which is what prompted me to make the other one. Because effectively what I've gone and done is I've doubled it. Um, by planning ahead, I've basically made it one longer and one longer, and it's kind of just a little bit 
but longer than this one and a little bit wider as well. Um, and it's great because it so, it's going to add so much more space. But you can see I've got the thermal, the geothermal generator here. Um, it's actually summer, so it doesn't really... I've actually had to have the coolers on to try and cool it down because it was overheating so much. Um, I do... You could argue... The reason why, because I realised this while I was doing this, is that you've got these vents here, right? Um, that basically... Because this was the core, this is my plan, right, of this settlement. Um, these are all backup heat systems, basically. So... These areas, it's never too cold or too hot, because if it's too hot, I just turn the cold cooler up. If all of the power gets knocked out, I think there's one instance where that wasn't producing much heat and it got cold, but gen generally, it's all pretty grand. But yeah, you see, I've got my hydroponics lab here. Um, I've got my storage areas. Not very much, which is, again, why I did actually... Um, let see, I've got this freaking so much wood. <laughs> um, this is where my graves of my enemies. Um, I've got, actually had an attack recently. I need to throw all their stuff away. I've got my medical area. Um, this place is quite a power hog as well, so that's why I'm glad I've done the new version. But it's very aesthetically pleasing. You probably see why I've deliberately made them three by three, so I can actually have dandelions going around the edge, so people don't complain about the... There's no... It's an ugly environment, you know? It's just like... No, oh, she's a bit mopey. Um, he's, she's quite nice man. Um, he's, he's, he's a miserable get anyway. But generally speaking, um, it's, everyone's pretty happy. I rarely get people losing their mind unless I actually leave, um, the vicinity of the compound of Deliverance 1. The other one's also going to be called Deliverance, but this is test Deliverance. Um, but yeah, I'll have more videos. Hope you guys like that. I hope you like my base, by the way. I'll, I'll definitely, don't worry, I will show off, um, the new version of Deliverance when it's finished. Um, it's pretty cool. I might, um pick a different flower to dandelions, or maybe at least have another person, because it's taking, it, 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 yeah, they used to be, uh, I think, called day lilies, but they were way too high maintenance to have that many, um, bit of a nightmare, actually, fuck off you, um, but yes, hope you guys like that, um, I'll have another Fallout video tomorrow, and then I'll have another RimWorld video, I'm gonna try and break it down, so they won't be as long as this one, I just wanted to give kind of a proper introduction to the game, um, it is very, very cool, I highly recommend it, um, some people might think it's a bit pricey, because it's about 20 pounds, um, I think, um, so probably, like, close to $30. However, the thing is, it is a massively robust game. I think I've racked up about 60-plus hours in it already. Um, it's really good fun. If you like this kind of thing, I highly recommend checking it out. Um, as always, follow me on Twitter, at no respawns, and see what I'm doing. Tweet me obscene pictures, just generally hurl abuse, or just, I don't know, have a, have a natter, um, or a see me complain about how I, I I don't leave the house anymore because I can't stop playing RimWorld. Um, I recently set up my second monitor, by the way, so I can now read your tweets while playing RimWorld. It's a mad, amazing time I live in. Mm. Alright, anyway. Oh, look, a raid. Jump to this location. Oh, fuck me, robots. Spoilers! Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I'll talk to you other people soon. Take care.